Okay, cool. So, is that blade sharpenable? Uh, yeah, you know, one thing we'll probably want to do is get it in our ultrasonic cleaner to get a better idea because there's a lot of wood buildup on the side of the blades. Yeah. So, why don't we do that? We'll go over here and check out the ultrasonic. Okay. I'll just do half of it to kind of show you. So this is an ultrasonic tank. There's ultrasonic waves in there, and it has a uh, solution that'll also help clean the blade. But those sound waves kind of scrub the blade. It'll get all that wood pitch filled up off the blade, and it does really does so really quickly. That's incredible. So you can see it and right there. You can see all, all that wood pitch is already removed, and you can kind of see it, the difference between the you know, before and after. And it just took a few seconds to do that. So now we have it cleaned off. Well, let's go wipe it off, and then we'll take it over to the uh, video inspection station. Oh, that's so light. So now you can see that a lot of that chipping on the teeth. If I bring this down into a different position, where you can see, you know, there's actually kind of chipping and craters in that tooth. Man, same thing there. You know, when, when, when you magnify it, you're like, wow, that's, yeah, I can really see it. Now there, there's a big kind of a chip. Let's take it over to Doug, and he's going to do his work. So, if you could, uh, so this is David's blade, and we, we ultrasonically cleaned it. We kind of inspected it over there on the video inspection, and it's got you know quite a few chip teeth mm -hmm. and a lot of dullness. First of all, the first thing I would do is just to uh, check all the way around just to make sure that the blade is that is straight we usually check and there's kind of just visually four quadrants on the blade you know that's a, a perfectly flat machine straight edge so I can tell that there's the, the blade isn't warped or or, or or bent or there's so there's Good. there's there's no need to do any of that kind of repair so at first glance and looking at that I would think you know there's there's lots of life left in this blade so we can we can do a little bit just a little heavier grind on that than we normally would. You can see on this tip here how it's it's not only affected the top, but it's kind of done about a 30 or 40 degree angle off to the side. So I would probably mark that one as a tip that I would think would need to be replaced. Right here I've got uh, several, several choices of carbide tips. I've already identified one of, the, one of the tips that I would use. Sorry, my hand is really dirty. That's, that's the tip that I would use on this blade. That's the shim material. That's what will melt and then uh, be like the glue that attaches the, the carbide tip to the steel body of the blade. The next step is we have a flux material. Basically, we, I'll just use a, a brush. And then with the, with the two areas that I've, I've identified here, then I'll just put a, a good coating of this flux material on there to protect the, you know, to protect the blade. That's my torch up. And I'll try to put just, just a little bit of pressure on here to hold it in place. Now what we want to do is we want the tip to just get a little bit of an amber color. I want that one to cool off. Around there, it burns the flux off a little bit, and then the uh, the shim is melted down. And once that cools off, the tip's not going to come back out of there. I told your name right, right? Sure did. Right. <laughs> All right. Now awesome. We know blade that is. Awesome. Go. That looks better. Do the other side. So that would basically be the cleanup process. Your name is still on there. And then what I would do then is this is the point where I would uh, hand it off to Mark. And this has a 
a dial indicator where we'll spin the blade around and we'll see how much run out is there in that blade as it spins around. And as you can see, this blade here has about one thousandth run out, which yeah, in right. the industry that's perfect. But if, if we saw that gauge moving, you know, ten thousandths, twenty thousandths, then we know that, okay, there's a certain section of the blade that needs to have a tension. I would mark the area with a piece of chalk where it's bending, okay? And I would come over here with my straight edge and I would look at that area and I, with my light in the background, I could say, that, oh yes, there's a bump right there. You could see there's a little ridge in the saw blade and I'd take my hammer and find out where that ridge is and just do a little tap, 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 okay? Check it again with my straight edge, okay? Say, okay, it looks pretty good. And then as a double check, I want to put it back on the runout stand and make sure that, yes, indeed, I did get the runout out and it's perfect now. Station here. And that tells me that my bevel angle is 10 degrees. Okay. And there's also what we call a clearance angle, which is a, a back angle, the angle that the, uh, the tooth is ground at behind the tip. And that clearance angle is this way. And this one is, happens to be 15 degrees. Okay. So I know I have a 10 degree combination grind with a 15 degree clearance angle. And then the pattern repeats. You have a flat tooth, left bevel, right bevel, left bevel, right bevel, flat. So that's, that sequence repeats for all 50 teeth. So there's 10 sequences of five, all right? So my machine has to know that in order to grind the proper geometry on it. So this one happens to start on a left bevel, all right? So I'll go ahead in there and pull up the proper program, which is a 10 inch. It's a combo. 50, 10, left. And we press go. Then it starts the grinding process. There we go. There you can kind of see where you know, that dullness was ground out. Apparently, wow. I don't think it's the same tooth, but.